The redesigned 2022 Honda Civic sedan was unveiled earlier in the week, and here is everything you need to know about this swanky new small car, or at least everything we're going to tell you. So sit down, settle in, maybe grab a libation or four, we won't judge, and get ready to enjoy some absolutely scintillating conversation. Welcome to Roadshow News Recap. So this was a big week for Honda and, of course, drivers that appreciate excellent small cars. So, Sean, I am just going to throw this right in your lap like a scalding hot cup of coffee. Describe the 2022 Civic Sedan to our viewers in five words or fewer. Go. Hmm. Let's go uh, shrunken Honda Accord, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> That works, and, and great. You did it in fewer than five words, and you passed my test. Your mic is not muted this week, so great job. Appreciate it. You never know what can so happen live, here. guys. You never know. Yes, that little mute button. It's very tricky. It'll sneak up on you. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. I'm teasing. So, uh. um yeah, that did. we're glad to be back. Happy Friday, everyone. Folks, we've got a great show planned for you today. Today's episode of Roadshow News Recap, if you haven't guessed, is all about the 2022 Honda Civic Sedan, but we'll also be touching on the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT, though I sometimes prefer to call it the Ford Mustang Mache, you know, like paper mache, Mach-E, like that's a grammar joke, never mind. Hyundai also introduced a high-performance version of its <laughs> Kona small crossover, and Toyota is developing not one... Not one, but two brand new SUVs. So make sure you stick around for all of that and a free order of cheesy breadsticks. So you can join us for the live broadcast of Roadshow News a Recap every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here, predictably on the Roadshow YouTube channel or Facebook or even on Twitch right now. And if you are watching live, make sure you drop your questions or comments in the chat box and we will address those as the show goes on. Also, stay tuned for the results of our weekly social media poll where we asked you guys what y'all think of the new Civic. And the results were pretty surprising, so we'll get to those in just a little bit. But Sean, care to describe this new Civic in more than five words? I would love to, Craig. It, that's what I'm here for. It's what we're both here for today to talk about the <laughs> Honda Civic. So where do I start? Number one, I have to say I really like it. I know it, it does look like a shrunken Honda Accord, but I think this is a very good route that Honda took for this. And I'm going to get this out of the way now because my overall approach to this car is I like the clean look. Um, there's cur I currently lease a 10th generation Honda Civic. Great looking car. It's a very good car. I'd say it's, in my opinion, the best in the segment. Uh, opinions may differ on that. But this one, it, it reminds me of why we love the golden age of Hondas so much. Those would be like the late 80s through the 90s, maybe a little bit of the early 2000s Hondas. Those were clean cars. They were simple cars. Mm -hmm. This is clean and simple. And I know, again, it looks like a shrunken Honda Accord, but the, the Accord is a good looking car. Um, I'd say in my, I'd say in my opinion, where it maybe gets a little generic rather than clean is that rear. Um, I know you saw this car in person and even pointed out a little bit of a Volkswagen Jetta vibe going on back there, but Overall, the exterior design, I really, really like it. And of course, we're going to talk about that interior because that is like chef's kiss right there. Yeah, exactly. The, the interior is really the star of the show because the exterior, while classy, it's not really breaking any new ground. But for Honda, to your point, Sean, I think this is a great looking small car, especially after seeing it in person. When they released that teaser photo a few weeks back, I was kind of indifferent about it because... The Civic looked like it had almost like a fat lip in that one picture they sent out. If you remember, it was like it was the car was red and it just it didn't oh, look yeah. very good yeah. to my eye. And but seeing yeah, it in person, yeah. it's a handsome little car. Um, and this is the sort of design that ages well. Right. You look like you look at an older Volkswagen Passat, for instance, from a couple generations ago. Pretty sleepy design, not a whole lot going on, but they still look good because they're classy and they're elegant. Right. Yep. 
Absolutely. That car that comes to mind for those like designs that just aged really well and aren't that old is the first generation Mazda 3. I feel like that kind of similar. It's simple, you know, nothing crazy about it. And that's not to say that the current Civic that you can go buy before this one ends up at dealers is a bad looking car. It's a good looking car for sure. But I just think it gets very, very busy. I remember when that car came out, some people said they saw a little bit of what was that weird wagon that Honda made? It was supposed to compete with the Venza before the Venza came back. It was, was it the Accord oh, the cross, cross the Tour? Accord cross Tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people saw kind of like the same kind of hump shape back there. And, you know, I still kind of see that, but um, it's a good looking car. O overall, for me, this is a clean evolutionary step. And, and when we talk about the underpinnings and some of the mechanicals, it's clear Honda didn't want to mess with success. Yes. And why mess with success? They sell a hell of a lot of Civics each year. Uh, the car has just arguably the best reputation in the segment for long-term quality, for driving dynamics, for, for, you know, feature content, everything. It's just, it's probably the best small car you can buy. So why screw that up? You know, and you don't need to break new ground in this segment. Like that's what the luxury end of the market's for. Um, so to give this car that sort of clean design, they made a few small tweaks. They, they pushed the A-pillars, the base of the A-pillars, they moved those rearward by almost two inches, which in turn sort of elongates the hood and gives it, I don't want to say rear wheel drive proportions, but it certainly looks more interesting, a little bit more upscale. Um, they also uh, widened the... Um, the, the, what is it, the, the track at the back of the car a little bit, and then they made the wheelbase just a hair longer. So a f the car may not look different, but there are some mechanical changes, definitely. Yeah, for sure. And I see here uh, Dave Grillo, I believe that's how, if I'm pronouncing it correct, says it looks like a, a mini Accord, and he says that's a good thing. And I would have to agree with that. I, I actually think the Accord is a handsome car. I think those looks uh, transferred very well to the Civic. Um, I haven't seen this in person yet, so I like to always uh, save my final opinion seeing it in person. Things can change from video, pictures, and then seeing it in the in the metal. Uh, but I think if Honda is going to use the Accord as a bit of a template uh, for some of its uh, future cars, I don't think that's a bad template to start with. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just scanning the uh, YouTube chat, Kevin Hawthorne says, good afternoon. I am from Florida. Well, good afternoon, Kevin. I'm from southeastern Michigan. And Sean, you are from the dairy belt of Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. You know it. Yeah, there's cows in the backyard. Old, I, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's required by the Homeowners Association to have at least three head of cattle, right? It's true. Yes. That's what it takes to live in Parma. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> oh, uh, boy. So people are saying... Um, the people are commenting on the 1.5 liter engine, which I guess has a reputation for oil dilution. I mean, w when we test new cars, we can't really comment on long-term reliability. I mean, we're in the car for a week, maybe a couple months if we get one as a long-termer. But from what I have, have you heard about oil dilution as an issue with that turbo engine, Sean? I personally have have not. Um, I will say um, I, I do lease one, but it's actually just a sport model. So it has the two liter. It doesn't have the turbo engine in it. Um, so that's just the entry level engine. Um, and to be frank, there's only 891 miles on it. <laughs> so uh, we flip in and out of a lot of cars sometimes. So uh, the personal set of wheels uh, doesn't get as much attention as it deserves sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gerg Hurl, Hurl, G R G H L G mm -hmm. says, Will there be a hybrid? And Manny GG's is also asking, New Type R? Um, Probably and probably, but we can't really say right now because all they've released is the sedan model, sort of the, the bread and butter yeah. version. But let's all just put our hands together and pray that we get a new Type R and then we get, you know, a bunch of other variants as well. And a manual transmission, which we'll get to in just a second because there's some disappointing yes. news further down yes. the drive line. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, and Suman <laughs> K Kakadi, I'm sorry. If I'm saying that wrong, please say hi to me. Well, hello, and thank you for watching and for tuning in live and for commenting. Um, but Sean, let's move on to the interior. We'll get to the drivetrain in just a minute. I really like what Honda's done with this cabin. Like, this is what I look for in a car. It's clean. It's simple. You don't need it to look like a freaking robot, which is kind of what you get in the current Civic. Um, very impressed by that cabin. 
Yeah, I know you sat in it and uh, filmed with it, and you got to you know rotate the knobs and check out all the materials in person. Um, but just seeing it as you see here, it's it's really impressive. I was hoping uh, when Honda released the prototype version of this car last year, they gave us one teaser sketch of the interior. And I think every single person on Roadshow staff said, please, please, please let that actually look like that teaser photo for production. Honda designers and engineers did it. It really looks like that photo. And I have to say, I get a little bit of like a uh, retro vibe from it. There's that really gorgeous strip of honeycomb there. That's kind of a throwback thing. There's also like a, a metal piece around the dials on some of the dials I see that seems kind of like a another retro cue. Um, I, I will say too, one thing that we haven't, or a lot of people haven't talked about with this yet is that gauge cluster really moves away from what the Civic's done for like 15 years now, which has been that big uh, center RPM gauge and then a, a digital uh, a readout of your speed. Um, the current generation car uh, has that. Uh, it, so this so is a cheesy departure. To me. So cheesy. <laughs> well, you know, I think it was really cool when it first came out because it was very different from a lot of other compact cars. Um, but it, it looks tired now and it, it's been around for a while. So I really like this direction. And again, that actually, I think, is very similar to uh, uh, the Accords display because in this, you either get a partially digital cluster on every model except the Touring. And then on the Touring, you get a full uh, digital gauge cluster. Yes, which I'm actually kind of a Luddite. I'm not a huge fan of all digital clusters. There's something about a nice set of analog gauges that looks like jewelry, you know? I mean, obviously analog gauges, oh, yeah. you can't swap them out. You can't uh, uh, have different views and different colors and everything, but they're, they just, they look classier to me if they're done right. And I often, being an old fashioned kind of person, I often don't care about cycling through 50 different menus. It's just a distraction to me, but I know why car automakers are doing it. <laughs> like everybody wants screens everywhere all the time. Yeah, there's definitely some benefits to having the digital cluster. I tend to agree with you. I'm more of an analog gauge cluster kind of person. Um, they just, I, if done right, like you said, it's just like, you know, like put slapping on a nice watch before you head out somewhere nice. You know, like it's just a nice little touch if you do them right. And they, you know, they can have a lot of character in the font and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, we're rapidly moving away from analog gauges. Um, you know, a lot of entry level cars will even have partially, you know, digital, the center little screen for driver information, et cetera. Um, but at least here, I have to say it looks like a very clean setup. I like the font they've done here. Um, easy. It looks easy to read uh, the configurations. Uh, you don't seem to have to flip through a whole lot to get to where you want to be. Um, so that's good. Uh, what do you think of that tablet style uh, infotainment there for the new Civic, Craig? I don't really mind it. I mean, you see that in a whole lot of cars these days. A lot of people deride them as an iPad. They just stuck on the dashboard. Well, how else do you integrate a screen like that? It's not necessarily easy because you need the screen to be up high so you could see it. And you're not looking at your ankles while you're driving to, you know, change the radio station or something. So you got to have it up high and it's got to be close enough that you can reach. So you're not like straining, trying to reach across the dashboard. Um, so there, you're kind of limited to what you can do. Um, and when you have a dashboard like the Civic, they kept the dashboard very low. If I remember correctly, it's at the same height as the top of the doors for better visibility. And they also made the dashboard super smooth and free of any cut lines, which is very clever because that eliminates unnecessary reflections in the windshield, which is very oh. clever to do, right? You keep it simple, you keep it clean, and you're going to have better visibility. Um yeah, I, I think that simple, clean ethos really from the outside went inward too. But the thing is like, you know, there are a lot of cars with a simple interior, but they're like, just kind of like, eh, you know, like they're okay. But this one looks clean and simple and it still looks stylish. That's what mm -hmm. I really like about this interior. And uh, I mean, we'd be remiss to not talk about those cool little joysticks behind the honeycomb. Oh, that, yes. Uh, move, move, move the vents. Tell us about that, Craig, because you had a blast with those when you had a hands-on with this car. Highlight of the vehicle, favorite feature. 
<laughs> the air vents. <laughs> so they've hidden them behind. They've hidden the air vents on the dashboard behind that that honeycomb strip, which is, for the most part, just an accent piece. Um, that's also going to be very difficult to clean. I think the Civic's going to have to come with a standard uh, can of compressed air in the glove box just because yeah, an air gun you can plug in or something. Yeah. <laughs> Blast them out. Yeah. But behind that honeycomb trim are the air vents, and you control them with these little uh, joysticks, kind of like a video game or something. And it just feels great. They click, they move very smoothly, and it's just a fun little like fidget spinner while you're driving. I loved them. They're very cool. Yeah, they look really cool. Uh, you know, maybe it's like a little Atari with every purchase, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But no, they seriously, they look really neat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just looking at the chat here. Cheese Incorporated says all digital screens and technology inside the cars nowadays just contribute to a high cost of repair. And I mean, I would imagine you're correct. I mean, technology ain't necessarily cheap. And then how do you fix it? Like, 10 years, 15 years from now, if that screen goes dead, are they even going to have one in stock or are you just SOL? I mean, these yeah. are questions a lot of people don't consider. Um, yeah. Mark Carlson says the front nose would benefit from some rake. It's too blunt. And uh, hmm. you certainly, I, I can't disagree with that. I think wait until yeah. you see the car in person because it is pretty attractive. L looks a lot like the Accord as we were talking about earlier. Um, but uh, maybe some more. I'm going to interject there actually. Because when I look at this car from the side, there's a, a peculiar car it reminds me of, and that's the Cadillac CT5. I don't know if you see that, Craig. Just, that weird oh, yeah, notch Evan's got a, that the CT5 has. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. Because the, the CT5 yeah. has very strange C-pillar. Like, Yeah, and weird. I'm not saying this is a strange C-pillar, but... It kind of reminds me of that, especially in the gray, because I think some of the first photos of the CT5 we saw uh, that the car was gray. Um, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of reminding me of that. And I actually think the CT5 is a good looking car. So that's not a diss to either of those cars, but I just saw a little bit of it in there and uh, decided to yeah, tell yeah. the Internet that because I have no filter, Craig. <laughs> it's funny you bring up Cadillac, though. That, that reminds me when I first saw the interior uh, of the new Civic here. The first thing I thought of was Lincoln. It looks like kind of like a Lincoln Aviator interior because mm. it's got the standalone screen on the center of the dashboard and the dashboard is low and very horizontal. And, and it's kind of mm. got that honeycomb pieces recessed. Look at a photo of a, of a Lincoln and then look at, at the Civic and tell me they're not similar. I mean, I mean that's you can not tell a bad me they're not, thing. But I'm going to just, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Lincoln's a brand I, I am very impressed by and happy to see them doing well these days. Um, so if there are worse companies to copy, certainly, uh, than Lincoln. Um, as yeah. for tech, the new Civic here, you get a standard 7-inch infotainment screen. The Touring model, though, does come with a 9-inch display, which has an infotainment system that should be very similar to what you get in either a Honda Accord or like an Odyssey minivan. So that's, that's good, but I don't know. That's not great. I think Honda could do a better job with its infotainment systems. They're certainly not my favorite. Um, but sitting in the, in the new Civic... I was very pleased to see a lot of soft plastics, and a lot of it looks very good. Nicely grained. Um, it's low sheen. It looks basically like what you would get in an Accord, which, of course, is the next size up and price class up. So great job on the interior all around. Uh, and supposedly they made the front seats more comfortable. We'll have to see. Mm. I sat in it for about three minutes when we were doing the video for the first look video, and they were nice. They were fine, but... Um, Again, we got to take we'll it on like a six hour if, road trip. Yeah, we'll have to see if it can touch uh, the, uh, what are they called? The Are they called the zero gravity seats from Nissan? I had a Sentra a few weeks ago and those yes. were some comfy, comfy seats, like shockingly comfy. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're excellent. And plenty of room in the backseat of the new Civic as well. Uh, I sat back there for a couple minutes while I was practicing the script and this, I don't know exactly where the front passenger seat was adjusted, but I had miles of leg room. The seat was comfortable. My head was nowhere near touching the, uh, the, you know, the ceiling in the car. So it sounds like this is going to offer a lot of space, a lot of, a lot of car for the money. Um, 
So if, uh, if you are watching live right now, we should be streaming, of course, on YouTube, Facebook, and then we're trying Twitch this week for the first time. But if, if you are watching the live show, thank you very much. And feel free to drop a question or comment in the chat room, and we will do our best to address those. As the program goes on, I do notice that um, a lot of folks are commenting on YouTube right here. Um, Carrington Hollister says, I'm late, but that Civic is sexy as F. So it sounds like Honda's going to sell a Civic <laughs> to Carrington. Sebastian Andrew, however, not quite as impressed. More boringness from Honda. Hmm. I don't know that it's yes, boring. Here, I say classy. Yeah, I, I think it's going to age really well. I think it's going to age really well. But over here on Facebook, we have uh, Monty Garza uh, says it looks the same. Uh, so I, I can see that. It's definitely evolutionary. Uh, that that I believe I think is valid. Uh, James Williamson said he's waiting for the SI. Uh, he currently has a 2020 SI, and uh, he says that lease is up in December 2022. Uh, I, I bet you we'll see an SI, and, and that is confirmed. We are going to get another SI sedan, that is for sure. Um, and then we also have here uh, Gabriel uh, Mebakura. Sorry, I can't if I uh, pronounce that correctly. From Nigeria, he just says, hello, friends. So hello. Yes, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Um, what else do we got in the YouTube chat? Just to scan it here right quick. Uh, Sriram Dantaluri says, looks just great. Looks just great. So another fan of the new Civic. So good news for Honda there. Um, I did notice on the first look video that we published a couple days ago, um, there was a very funny comment I spotted on YouTube. It was from Parashar Krishnamarichari. Um, he and or she said, I'm sorry, I'm not, I am not deliberately trying to butcher that. I even put hyphens in the name so I could try to pronounce it. I still did it wrong. I'm sorry. Um, so this person says, so one of the new colors is meteorite gray. That's the gray, that's the, uh, the gray hue of the car that we've seen in the B-roll here. Meteorite gray, huh? I guess it joins the bold palette of colors like ashen charcoal, gunmetal, graphite, <laughs> moonless night. Shadow Slate and Dusty Stone. And I was like, don't forget white. <laughs> yeah, right? Plumber Van White. <laughs> yes. I saw this comment and I nearly fell out of my chair. It was hilarious. I was laughing so hard because <laughs> there are a couple <laughs> new colors for the Civic, <laughs> one of which is that meteorite gray, which is pretty much just gray. <laughs> so this person made a great comment. And I'm wondering is, if that's maybe our the show's executive producer, Evan Miller. Is that his online alias? Is that him leaving these salty <laughs> comments? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We don't, sometimes we don't know much about Evan. He's a mystery. Right now in my he ear, is... he's saying maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know how we could, maybe we should call the FBI or like ATF or something and they'll do a <laughs> little investigation for us, find out who this character is because yes. I don't know if I trust him. Anyway, yes. but Craig, I was going to say, I think ahead, uh, that one comment, I think that one comment about the SI leads us into a nice shift. There's a pun there for you because we have some news <laughs> about the Civic Sedan. And that is, my friends, there will be no stick shift. So CVT only. So your segue doesn't work, though, Sean, because there's no shifting, right? It's just right. CVT, right. You're, you're screwed. Well, there's nothing. I try. I tried, everyone. <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. But, I know. Uh, powertrain. CVT only. That's kind of sad. But isn't that the way it is with the current car? The sedan, you can't no. get a stick? You can, because the one parked in my driveway that I lease has a stick. Oh, well, there you go. Prove me wrong. Um, but it's yeah. not going to be in your driveway for much longer, is it? I hear rumblings no, on it, our uh, <laughs> Slack channel. No, it's it's not. I uh, It is being sold uh, because, uh, frankly, it just sits there <laughs> and it's not really needed. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, but you, you can get a stick on the current sedan. It's hard. <laughs> uh, when I <laughs> went looking, uh, they had to bring it in from very far away, and I originally wanted a coupe with a stick, and they said they couldn't even find one. So even though Honda would build them, dealers were not ordering them. I mean, I don't blame them mm. because there's because nobody buys probably, them. Yeah, it was probably just me being like, "Hey, I, I want one," and you know, dealers are like, "Who the heck are you?" 
like the only Get one <laughs> and yeah, yeah right. seriously Literally. but but uh uh yeah so, this new car is going only going to be a cvt uh you know the honda cvt is not bad it's actually i think my favorite i i want to say my favorite of the current batch of like small car cvts at least in the 10th gen civic we'll have to see uh how it performs with this 11th generation uh what i say what's funny craig <laughs> Saying your favorite CVT is like saying, gosh, my favorite STD is gonorrhea. It's just it's the one I love to catch the most. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Just... I mean, if we got to live with them, we might as well have one that we prefer more than the other, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are certainly oh. worse CVTs than what Honda does. Absolutely. Here's, here's how I will rephrase that. If I was car shopping, I'd be looking for a traditional automatic or still a manual transmission because I'm a weirdo that doesn't care if I'm stuck in traffic. I'd rather just still shift it myself. That's just me. It's funny what... When you drive a car with a manual transmission and you do it for many years, it it basically just becomes automatic. You, you Your body, your muscle memory, you just go through the motions. You don't have to think about it. It's like even in rush hour traffic, the car is just kind of like driving itself. And you're like, what's happening? At least for me, that's how, yep. it, how it works out. And you, yeah. you just it's everything becomes second nature to the point where you don't have to think about it. You can be listening to a podcast or, or you know, talking on the phone through the, the Bluetooth system. And it's just like the car is doing it. At, just your hands are moving, your feet are doing their thing, and away you go. Yep. Yep. So I don't think anyway, you can ever forget either. No, it's like riding a bicycle. You, you yes. don't really forget. What is under this new Civics hood? Should people be excited, Sean, or depressed? Well, I it depends if you like the powertrain lineup for the current car because it's basically <laughs> the same. <laughs> Uh, so what we're still going to get a <laughs> we're still going to get a 2.0 liter uh, inline four that's going to be for the uh, base trim, the LX, and that red sport model. Uh, even though it's called sport, it's going to get the entry level engine, and that's still how Honda does it right now too. Uh, so that doesn't change. Sports, yes. There's some Honda Performance Division accessories on there, which do look good. I like the the gloss black on there. I think that looks nice. Uh, but then if you jump up to the EX and the Touring, you get the 1.5 liter turbo engine, which some people were uh, talking about those oil issues with. So uh, I know uh, when you spoke to Honda and saw this car, they said they've done a lot of internal re-engineering of that. It makes a little bit more horsepower, a little bit more torque. Um, yeah. uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good engine as it stands, and it'll probably serve this car very well. Um, I actually like the 2 liter in this car believe it or not, uh, it, it revs a little bit more freely and it just reminds me of those older Hondas, like I said at the beginning. So that, mm -hmm. that's my take on that. Haven't driven it in this car, obviously, so we'll have to see. Uh, but yeah. uh, if you like the current ones, uh, you'll be stoked for the new powertrain lineup. <laughs> <laughs> more of the same. But the two liter in your car, 158 horsepower, I mean, that's not crazy, but it's more than enough. You get 138 pounds of torque mm -hmm. as well. Um, the one five turbo is going to get you 180 horsepower now, a little bit more than before and 177 mm -hmm. pound feet of twist. So again, a few pounds more than last year, but, uh, minor improvements internally to that one five. I think they made, uh, the intake plumbing a little bit more efficient and then the two liter gets a revised start stop system and then some sort of a different catalytic converter, which those sort of changes uh, have helped boost the car's fuel economy slightly depending on test cycle and depending on model. So your car may not see an improvement, but some of them are up by one or two miles per gallon. So that's always moving in the right direction. Glad to hear Honda doing yes. that. Yes. But yes, yes. Um, yes, in point of fact, yes. But what did you guys think of this redesigned Civic? Well, here's what you all said to say on the socials. So Evan, pull up those graphics. Let's see what the folks voted on. All right, we got Honda Civic, 10th mm. gen versus the new one. Looks like a lot of people, I can't really see it. Is that? The gen, old one is one 42%. Day? The new one, okay. uh, 58%. So and that's, uh, wow, you can really see it. it does look pretty similar still when you do that <laughs> uh, side to side. But yeah, definitely evolutionary. But it looks like the new one edges it out by, uh, I don't do math. What is that? 12, 16%, 16%, yeah. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. No, I would have thought it would have been a, 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 
uh, just a, a blowout. I thought people would have much preferred the new car, but um, interesting to see that it's so close. Yeah, and then we also looked at a couple of its rivals. Uh, here we have the this Corolla one I expected. Or the this I expected. I, yeah, <laughs> I expected this one too because what happened to the Corolla? I mean, like it's a good solid car, but like it's just it lost kind of like it's I don't I don't know I'm lost that neat factor about it. I don't know. Did it ever have a neat factor though? I mean, the person you buy a Toyota <laughs> you like a Corolla because you want an heirloom, a family heirloom that you can hand down to your grandchildren, right? Because to- <laughs> when it comes to reliability, like Toyota is still the champ. Like you want a car that's going to last 20 years, you get a Toyota because it's yeah. probably going to last that long without ever leaving you stranded or requiring more than an oil change. And there, there is so much to be said about that. However, yeah. as Antoine Goodwin, one of our other... <laughs> Uh, roadshow reviews editor said to me once toyota gives you the best technology from seven years ago and i'm like that is the most accurate description (laughs) they're so conservative they don't put anything like new or interesting in their cars and they just sort of muddle along with the same infotainment system or that horrible horrible trackpad you get in lexus vehicles um yeah but they do that for a reason because once they figure out how to make something reliable it lasts forever and that's that's what they've built their reputation on so yep that's yep. my, I'll get off my soapbox now about the Civic and the Corolla. <laughs> and we have one more poll actually, Craig. So maybe yes. you'll have to step back on the soapbox. This one I was interested in and I'm kind of surprised to see the Civic uh, beating out the Elantra. That expressive new Elantra. Yeah, that's, that is a real looker. I don't happen to yeah. love that sort of chiseled body, but I get why people like it. It's I will say sharp. that car looks so much better in person than it does in photos i see them starting to roam around on the highway or on the streets around here and uh it has a lot of presence especially from the rear three quarters when i see like i'm coming up from behind it i'm like oh that looks really good and then i'm excited you know for the uh end line or i think they're making an end version of that but uh really quick here before we jump off of i know we're in the polls but we're talking about the powertrain yes uh jesus jesus uh santana says uh the CVT is sad, uh, and he says, I guess I'm going with a new WRX. Um, so, well, maybe the SI could change your mind uh, because the SI will have a stick. Uh, or, yeah, the stick is staying around for that. Uh, pretty sure we know that for sure. And I believe Honda has said when the hatchback uh, debuts, uh, since the coupe is no longer a thing for the Civic, they're going to turn the, the hatchback into the sportier uh, model geared more towards... Uh, the youngsters, <laughs> if you want to say, and they are going to put a stick in that as well. So we'll see the manual stick around, just not for the sedan. Is there going to be a CVT in the Type R, though? That's what I really want. Oh, God. I mean, didn't you just <laughs> compare a CVT to an STD? Like, don't don't give the Type R an STD. <laughs> oh, don't sorry. do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Uh, oh, no, it's Friday. We're going to have a nice time here. You stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being a wet blanket again. But thank you to everyone out there that voted in our social polls. Uh, if you want, follow us at uh, Roadshow Autos on the Instagram. That's where we put the polls up every week. Check it out for polls and, of course, a lot more great stuff. Um, but there was a whole lot more news as well, Sean, that broke this week, not just Civic. What else should people be talking about, thinking about? Put it on their radar. What else is out there that they need to know about? Well, the the other giant thing we saw this week was the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT and the GT Performance Edition. This is the long-promised performance version of the standard Mach-E. Our colleague uh, Chris Paukert, was invited for an exclusive ride along. Uh, didn't get to drive it, but he had a Ford uh, hot shoe in there, uh, rip him around the uh, test track there. And uh, he tells us uh, he actually felt kind of sick after it because it was that quick and uh, it was carving through the corners that well. So that says something about it. Uh, yeah. This, this thing seems pretty impressive, especially if you get someone who's perhaps looking at a Model Y performance. This could be a pretty good alternative to that they're talking 480 horsepower 600 pound feet of torque zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds 
And guys, that's just the GT because there's the GT Performance Edition and Ford engineers mm. were like, hey, let's give them even more torque. So there's 634 pound feet there. Uh, that's, that's, that's a ton of torque. That's, I mean... It, not if, literally. You I mean, that'd be 2,000 pounds. But... Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, still, I mean, for, for a car that, you know, I can't imagine a ton of owners are going to actually track... I mean, imagine just like going to the mall or the grocery store and you just like floor it with 634 pound feet of torque instantaneously. I mean, this is this should be a pretty fun little thing, Craig. I would think so. Zero to 60 mm -hmm. and they're claiming about 3.8 seconds. Um, the only downside, it's a bit expensive, not necessarily expensive for an EV and the range isn't great. 250 miles of range for the GT model, but then the performance version only 235, which I get it. Like I'm sure it has tires that are like two feet wide and it has other, well, they actually, you know, Craig, they, they stuck issues. Pirelli's on the GT performance edition. So there's, there's summer tires, uh, on this performance edition. And then the gotcha. GT, uh, still runs on all seasons. Um, so if you're concerned about range, that'll get you the 250 with the all seasons, the performance edition, you know, bumps it down because of the, uh, stickier tires there so trade-offs that's how it always is with evs you know tire technology i'm sure one day is going to get there where you can have the best of both worlds but we are not there yet nope unfortunately not and and battery technology frankly while getting better every year isn't quite there yet either i want an ev with yep. that i can charge in like 10 minutes and have like 500 miles of range and it's going to maintain that range for the next 15 years once we get to that point evs are perfect right Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But no, Craig, like you were saying, uh, these aren't exactly uh, cheap. Uh, the GT is going to start at $61,000. Uh, the GT Performance Edition, you're looking at $66,000. And both of those include a uh, $1,100 destination charge. So uh, save your pennies. Uh, but if you're looking for a performance EV, it's nice to have options. You can't complain about that. Absolutely. And you know, the Maki -E looks good. It looks really nice. So I really love those Tesla, wheels. I would say Th those wheels look really nice. I love that. I, I can't remember the name cyber orange. That might be the color uh, <laughs> of this, of this color. It looks really good. I like it, but uh, that's not all. We had another big debut this week, everybody. Uh, the Hyundai Kona N, as we alluded to at the start of the show, uh, this little guy is essentially a Hyundai Veloster on stilts, Craig. <laughs> hmm. uh, it's got a 2.0 liter turbo four, 276 horsepower, 289 pound feet of torque, and an eight speed dual clutch is uh, handling all of that power. And I know uh, you're a bit of a Ugh. sad, tr sad trombone about that. <laughs> I've grown, just being in and out of cars, I've grown to just hate dual clutch automatics. They just, torque converter automatics are always smoother, especially when you're taking off, you know, from a standstill. And they shift as quick or, or about as quick to the point where it doesn't matter. I mean, the main benefit of dual clutch transmissions has traditionally been their just boom, 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 boom gear changes. But yeah. Your typical traditional automatic can basically do the same thing, and it feels way better when you launch the car. So I'm done with dual clutch autos. I, I've washed my hands of them. I've had enough. All right. Well, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Tell us Sean? how you really Am feel, crazy? Craig. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> That's what I do. Mean. Big uh, old bucket of truth here. There you go. But uh, I don't know. I uh, this car, I uh, it's all right. I. I kind of, when we've known this car was coming and I'm like, who's this for? Who's, who's buying? This is, I mean, it's, if you want this experience, like you can also get that dual clutch in the Veloster N. Uh, so I'm a little confused. I mean, I'm, I don't work at Hyundai marketing, but clearly they see a, you know, a market or a group of people who want this. Um, again, it's nice to have options, a little bit more space mm -hmm. perhaps than a Veloster, uh, a little bit more comfort. Uh, it's still going to do zero to 62 miles per hour. That's a hundred kilometers per hour in 5.5 seconds and 149 mile per hour. Yeah. 149 mile per hour top speed. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be quick. That's for sure. Uh, I don't know. I it's, it's not my favorite little thing. Uh, the Veloster is super cool. The Veloster N I'd rather buy one of yes. those. 
oh, uh, yes. personally. But I mean, I, I got to give it credit. I mean, it, it definitely looks the part that those giant dual exhausts back there and lots of busy body work going on. Uh, I would say just as busy as maybe a Civic Type R, like the current one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, and then yeah. as, as I read the story, there's some uh, a special paint color, Sonic Blue. If I understand, mm, yes. which basically makes look, it look like a Korean Airlines plane or a pair of hospital scrubs. It's just light, light blue color. Yes. But. Yes. So do so our next poll is going to be, do you like hospital slipper blue or meteorite gray? <laughs> which one? That, oh, that's right. going to be next week. <laughs> next week. No, just kidding. Just kidding. It should but, be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it should be. Maybe we will. You never know. What, you know, we're <laughs> what STD is is a CVT to you? That's the poll. Ooh, poll. there's one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, anyway, what else do we? That's have That's an here? unfortunate well, we... turn. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a segue because we're turning to a couple of new Toyota SUVs, Craig. That's another big one that dropped this week over there on the Roadshow.com. Uh, we learned. Toyota has a couple of new SUVs coming. Really didn't give us a whole lot of detail about them, uh, but it sounds like they, you know, the, the Toyota one might replace the Sequoia, you know, and, and the Sequoia is mm. basically as old as a Sequoia tree. It's been around basically. forever. Like, you know, I think it first launched like Betty White and the Toyota Sequoia are <laughs> like the same age or yes. something. Uh, it's, it's not right. old. <laughs> uh, uh, but... Yeah, they're going to be three-row SUVs, uh, and I should say Toyota didn't say neither. They didn't refer to either of them as a replacement for the Sequoia, but it seems like that might be what they're hinting at. Uh, So we'll have to wait and see, but they're going to be built in Indiana. Uh, That's where the production announcement came out of, and we caught that little nugget, and you can read all about that at theroadshow.com. But uh, we actually had our expert rendering artist, uh, render these vehicles. And Evan, I do believe we have oh, those we? photos that we can show exclusively to you viewers. Oh, there it is. This is a roadshow. Oh. oh, God. What? <laughs> oh, it's three rows. This? this is so terrible. Each, each, each row gets <laughs> their own set of doors. It's a door. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, I, I hope it doesn't look like that. That is something... <laughs> wow it's like Craig, part, we gotta Tacoma, stop paying people for we gotta stop paying people in like donated cans you know maybe we'll get some more quality stuff to show these people <laughs> i mean they, they love ramen noodle right get some of those yeah pay off our producers yes. and other assorted folks but uh do yes, we know when and... these suvs are going to come out and do we know if they're body on frame or unibody uh, we did not get those details. Uh, we do know that Toyota is dumping a lot of money into these. Uh, like we said, one will be a Toyota, one will be a Lexus. Uh, but we do know so they're probably uh, closely related then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, that kind of makes me think we might be looking at something body on frame. Uh, they mentioned electrified drivetrains, possibly a hybrid we might see. Uh, and it's also going to have a hands-free driving system, a lot like, uh, GM's Super Cruise, and then there's Ford's Blues Clues or Blue Cruise. You know, I like to call it Blues Clues now at this point. I, it's way more fun. I'm just going to always say it, it now. It is. Uh, <laughs> but you can uh, write that's, the, that's, the clues down in your notebook or whatever. And there you go. You know, go from there. That, yeah, for sure. For sure. But uh, so this sounds exciting. Yeah. You know, a couple of new big SUVs, and uh, Everyone loves SUVs right now, so clear. And Toyota knows what they're doing with SUVs. They can't build the Rav Four fast enough, and uh, the Highlander. We actually have a Highlander in our long-term fleet right now, as you know, Craig, and it's been being yes. passed around the staff. Uh, I had it for a little bit, and it's it's a very nice uh, nice ride uh, so far. I had yeah. uh, some nice things to say about it in the past. And it's the hybrid model, if I'm not mistaken. So super efficient for a vehicle mm-hmm. with three rows of seats. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So hopefully I'm hoping these new Toyota SUVs are actually new and they're not just going to pull a Tacoma on us and sort of, you know, reskin the same old thing, but we shall see because they haven't released them yet. We don't know. But on that note, I think it's time we wrapped up today's show because uh, I guess I'm done bloviating for the week. What about you, Sean? What the heck's a bloviate? (laughs) Come on. 
you, you've been bloviating for the past 44 minutes, so... <laughs> ah, chatting, anyway. chatting, talking. <laughs> chatting, yes, chatting. Sean, thank you as always for your help, and we owe, of course, a big round of applause to our, our producer, Evan Miller, for handling all the technical stuff that we don't know. Oh, there he is, and he's got a friend. Hello. How are you doing, hey, Evan? Hey, a friend. Oh, and some uh, <laughs> energy drink, I guess. Excellent. Uh, Stay hydrated. Who's, who's the pupper? Yes, the lovely little pupper there. <laughs> and, of course, thank you all out there for watching Roadshow News Recap, where we dissect and discuss the biggest automotive story of the past week. You can join us for the live broadcast every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on the Roadshow YouTube channel. And get this elsewhere like Facebook and now Twitch. Anyway, thanks again for watching and you all have a great weekend. Go Red Bull. <laughs>